The social exchange theory is a social psychology concept that views human relationships as results-driven social behavior. It's founded on the idea that we choose to start and maintain relationships that maximize benefits and minimize costs. There's a certain amount of give and take in each relationship, and the value of the benefits and the costs within them determine whether or not one chooses to continue that relationship. American sociologist George Hommens is credited as the founder of the social exchange theory. According to Hommens, social behavior is an exchange of goods, material goods, but also non-material ones, such as symbols of approval or prestige. Furthermore, Peter M. Blau expanded on Hommens' work. Blau's writing focused on the economic and utilitarian perspective of social exchange. Blau defined social exchange as voluntary actions of individuals that are motivated by the returns they're expected to bring and typically do, in fact, bring from others. This presentation will explain the five principles of the social exchange theory. These principles include the idea that social behavior can be explained in terms of costs, rewards, and exchanges, People seek to maximize rewards and minimize costs in pursuit of the greatest profit. Social interactions involves two parties, each exchanging a reward needed by the other. Social exchange can be used to explain the development and the management of interpersonal relationships, and social exchange affects the relationships among members of groups and organizations. To illustrate the main concepts of the social exchange theory, we'll be referencing two characters, Philip, an assistant, and Sam, Philip's boss. Before we jump into the theory's main principles, we need to define a few key elements of the theory. These elements are rewards, costs, profit, and equity. Rewards, in the context of the social exchange theory, are defined as the perceived credits resulting from specific social behavior. This notion emphasizes that any given reward might have different values for different people. In other words, one man's trash is another man's treasure. It's also important to note that the perceived value of these results also fluctuates over time. Rather than staying constant, Let's use coffee to demonstrate the fluidity of a reward. If Philip brings Sam a coffee the morning after she stayed up late finishing a project, Sam will perceive the coffee as extremely valuable. However, Sam may perceive the value of a coffee as less valuable if she was able to get a full night's rest or if she didn't like coffee. The value of rewards are also influenced by satiation and scarcity. Satiation occurs when rewards are given too often and eventually become void of value. On the other hand, scarcity is the concept that a shortage of rewards thus raises the value of the reward. Sticking to our original coffee example, satiation can occur if Philip brings Sam the same coffee every day. This is because, over time, the coffee Philip brings Sam is less of a novelty to her. Conversely, the value of the coffee increases if the coffee Philip brings Sam is only seasonally available. Thus, the changing circumstances of the time greatly impact the value of the reward. Rewards can also be social. Social rewards can only be met through interactions with another person. This includes things like being loved and respected. Social rewards are broken down into two types, intrinsic and extrinsic. The difference between the two is that extrinsic social rewards cost the person providing the reward. For example, an extrinsic social reward for Philip is being gifted tickets to a baseball game by Sam. Meanwhile, an extrinsic social reward for Philip is feeling like a valued and respected employee. The second element we'll discuss is costs. Costs can be defined as something of value that is taken away, or conversely, a new punishment is inflicted upon a person. Like rewards, costs are fluid. They change in the value from person to person and can change in their significance. In the previous example, the cost of Sam's extrinsic reward to Philip came in the form of the monetary costs of the tickets. However, sometimes costs can be intangible, such as time and effort. The value of your time or effort varies depending on the demands placed on your time or your effort. For example, the cost for Philip would be giving up his lunch hour for an impromptu meeting. In contrast, the cost of giving up his lunch hour for an impromptu business meeting would greatly increase if Philip had to sacrifice having lunch with his best friend who was visiting from out of town. The next element we will address is profit. The balance of rewards and costs is called profit. There are two types of profits. 
positive profit, which occurs when the rewards outweigh the costs, and negative profit, which occurs when the costs outweigh the rewards. Assuming Philip values eating lunch with his best friend visiting from out of town more than receiving free baseball tickets, and Philip values free baseball tickets more than giving up his lunch hour for an impromptu meeting, Philip having to give up his lunch hour for an impromptu business meeting, but getting free tickets to a baseball game is an example of a positive profit since the reward is greater than the cost. On the contrary, sacrificing the opportunity to have lunch with his Best friend visiting from out of town for an impromptu business meeting is an example of a negative profit because the cost is greater than the reward. The last element of the social exchange theory we'll discuss is equity or distributive justice. As the name suggests, the element is concerned with fairness. The goal is to have an equal ratio of rewards to costs for both partners. The more costs we incur, the more we're expected to be rewarded. For example, if Philip has to give up two consecutive lunches for a work meeting, he may expect a bigger reward, such as a bonus rather than an additional baseball ticket. Inequity results when the costs far outweigh the rewards of the social interaction and negatively affect the relationship. Moreover, equity depends on each partner's ability to recognize and adjust their evaluation of both parties' costs and rewards. To demonstrate, if Sam takes Philip out to a fancy five-course dinner and Philip invites Sam over for a barbecue and ice cream sundaes to reciprocate the gesture, the exchange may still be perceived as equitable because of both parties' abilities. Now that we have defined and explained the key elements of the theory, let's dive into the theory's principles. The first principle is based on the assumption that social behavior can be explained in terms of costs, rewards, and exchanges. When considering any social interaction, we look at the cost as well as the rewards we might receive from said interaction. We look at the exchange of these costs and rewards and determine whether the interaction is worth engaging in. What this principle is trying to say is that the behaviors of an individual is influenced by the perceived value of the rewards or the costs. However, the exchange of costs and rewards between individuals can also be used to predict behavior. The second principle involves maximizing rewards and minimizing costs in order to obtain the best profit. As human beings, we are motivated by self-interest, and as a result, we're always going to try to choose interactions in which our rewards are greater than our costs. In general, we're going to try and choose any situation in which we have the lowest cost possible. To demonstrate, Sam attempts to maximize her rewards and minimize her costs by buying cheap baseball tickets as a reward for Philip when he sacrificed his lunch hour to attend an important impromptu business meeting. Although the baseball tickets cost Sam, the tickets are not as costly as not having Philip attend the important business meeting or providing Philip with another more costly reward, such as a week-long vacation. The third principle demonstrates that social interactions involve two parties. This principle relies on the idea that we engage in social interactions because we have something to gain from them, and others interact with us because they have something to gain from our mutual exchange. The interaction creates an interdependent relationship, or a relationship in which people are mutually reliant on each other. As long as two people feel that their meeting or exceeding their rewards compared to costs, the social interaction will continue. If at any point a person feels that their costs are exceeding their rewards, they're more likely to stop the interaction. Sam and Philip both depend on each other. Sam needs Philip to perform his duties as an assistant, and Philip needs Sam in order to be employed. Without each other, there'd be no exchange. However, if Sam notices Philip has not been completing the task she has been assigning him, Sam is likely to fire Philip. The fourth principle demonstrates that the social exchange theory can be used to explain the development and management of interpersonal relationships. According to this principle, there are five different reasons why we choose to interact and create relationships we have chosen. The following reasons are Outcomes These are the end products of the interaction, that is, the final costs and rewards we obtain from any sort of communication. The outcome of Sam and Philip's relationship is that Philip has a job and Sam has an assistant.
comparison level. When considering our relationships, we compare the relationship to what we expect we should receive from said relationship. If the relationship meets or exceeds our expectations, then we're probably going to continue it. But if we feel that the relationship isn't meeting our standards, then there's a possibility that we'll end it. For example, Sam has certain expectations for Philip, and if he doesn't meet them, then she might fire him in pursuit of someone more competent. Comparison level for alternatives. This involves comparing what one could be receiving instead and assumes we're more likely to choose to engage in a relationship that provides us with greater rewards. For instance, if Philip had worked as an assistant for another employer for a lower salary and less work, he might compare his new job to his old job. If he thinks that the work he does for Sam is not worth his salary, he might choose to go back to his previous employer. Forecasted rewards and costs. When deciding how long the relationship will last, we estimate the future cost and rewards. If we believe that our future profits will either continue to be the same or grow, then we are going to continue the relationship. However, if we believe that our profits will decrease in the future, we're less likely to want to continue the relationship. For example, if Philip is not delivering the kind of work that Sam expects, she might think this is a pattern and won't want to work with him in the future. Cumulative rewards and costs. These include looking at the overall costs and rewards of a relationship throughout the entirety of the relationship. To illustrate this idea, if Philip has been late to work recently but has shown up on time every day since he first started working for Sam, Sam may decide to not fire Philip because she knows that overall, Philip is a timely person. The fifth principle aims to explain how social exchange affects relationships among members of groups in organization. Blau explained the need for help or advice is what leads to social interaction among groups and organization. An example of this principle is Philip and Sam becoming friends outside of work. In brief, we have explained how the social exchange theory aims to predict and explain behavior through an understanding of the factors that individuals take into account in making a decision about their actions. Given the information we provided in this presentation, you all should be able to use social exchange theory concepts to answer how we go about making decisions about what we are willing to give up in order to gain something, what factors influence our decisions to pursue, sustain, or terminate a relationship, and why we feel resentment when we feel we've put more into a relationship or sacrificed more to sustain it than our partner. Let's see the social exchange theory in action. Don't forget to apply what you've learned to this video. I knew I was working today and I made that meal and you could have thought to yourself, you know, you could have said, yeah, I, I'm not, I think I'm going to get Brooke some flowers. You said on our very first date that you don't like flowers, that they're a waste of money. Every girl likes flowers, Gary. You say that you don't like flowers. I'm supposed to take that to mean that you do like flowers? No, this is not about... You're not... You're not... You're, you're, that, you're not getting it. You're not getting this, Gary. Okay, it's not about the lemons. It's not about the flowers. It's not about the dishes. It's just about... Um, how many times do I have to drop hints about the ballet? You know I can't stay. Brooke, come here. We talked about the damn ballet. I hate the goddamn ballet. You got a bunch of dudes in tights flopping around for three hours. It's like a medieval techno show. It's a nightmare. I sit there in a sweat. The whole thing. I do. I wonder when the hell's the goddamn nightmare gonna end? Go to a damn ballet. It's not about you loving the ballet, Gary. It's about the person that you love loves the ballet, and you want to spend time with that person. Not when they're at the ballet. Okay, forget the ballet. I... Forget the ballet. We don't go anywhere together. We just went to Ann Arbor together. To Ann Arbor. To the Michigan Notre Dame game. You, th you think screaming drunk kids and leprechauns doing backflips, that's fun. That's fun for me. Come on, man. I did that for you. What do you how do you show up for me? I'm up on the bus every goddamn day Come for you. Come on. You I'm busting my ass to be the best tour guide in the damn city so I can make enough money to support both of us, and hopefully you won't have to work one day. I want to work. All I ask, Brooke, is that you show a little bit of appreciation that I just get 20 minutes to relax when I come home instead of being attacked with questions and nag the whole damn thing. You think that I nag you? That's all you do. All you do is nag me. The bathroom's a mess. Your belt doesn't match. Hey, Gary, you should probably go work out. Nothing I ever do is ever good enough. I just want to be left the hell alone. Really? Is that what you want, Gary? Is that what you want? Yeah. That's what you want? Yeah. Fine, great, do whatever the hell you want. You leave your socks all over this house, dress like a pig, play your stupid-ass video game, I don't care, I'm done. 
What? I am done. I don't deserve this. I really do not deserve this. I deserve somebody who gives a shit. I'm not spending one more second of this life with some inconsiderate prick. You're a prick. 